Hello, and welcome to the Electronics Lab. The circuit that you see here is an integrator, and it's called this because it takes the input voltage and integrates it over time to give the output voltage. Now that may seem like a strange thing for a circuit to do some calculus on a signal, but in this video, we're going to analyze the circuit to see how it can actually do integration. And to do this analysis, we are going to once again assume that this op amp is ideal, which means no current flows into the inverting or non-inverting inputs. And the open loop voltage gain is infinite. And so with this negative feedback here, the voltage at the inverting terminal and the voltage at the non-inverting terminal will be the same. We can also assume these other characteristics, but they don't have as much of an effect on the analysis that we're going to do. All right, to do this analysis, we know that since no current goes into the inverting terminal, the current through this capacitor is going to be equal to the current through that resistor. The current through a capacitor is equal to the capacitance times the rate of change of the voltage across the capacitance over time. We also know that this voltage across the capacitor, that's going to be the same as V out, because remember this point right here is a virtual ground because of the negative feedback of the circuit. So that current through the feedback resistor is equal to the feedback capacitance times the rate of change of V out over time. And that's going to be equal to IR1, which we can figure out based on Ohm's law. We've got zero volts on this side of R1 and V in on that side of R1. So that'll be zero minus V in or just negative V in over R1. Now I'm going to bring this feedback resistor over to the right-hand side of the equation. So I just have dV out dt, so rate of change of the output voltage with respect to time is equal to negative V in over R1 times that CFB, that feedback capacitor. Now, if I take the integral over time on both sides of this equation, and this left-hand side of the equation just becomes V out, and the right-hand side of the equation well, that's the integral over time of V in, but I can take out this constant, which is the minus one over R1 CFB, and then just have that V in inside the integral here. And I've redone the equation here in a nicer, easier to read form. And we have an output voltage that is proportional to the integral of the input voltage over time. And that proportion is based on the resistor and that feedback capacitor. Unlike some of the other op-amp circuits that we've looked at, like the inverting and non-inverting amplifier and the summing and different amplifiers, it may not be so obvious what this circuit can be used for, but there are actually a number of uses. For example, you can use it as part of an analog-based PID controller, like this motor speed controller that I've drawn here. The I of PID stands for integral, and you need part of the circuit that takes the integral of the signal error in the feedback loop to help you keep track of the reference point better. And I'll say that the analysis of this circuit here is outside the scope of the video, but along with the integrator here, there are also a few other blocks that you should be able to recognize in the system. There's an inverting amplifier, there's a couple of difference amplifiers, there's a differential amplifier, but the reason that I brought it up here was just to show you a practical application of an integrator circuit. Integrators can also be used in analog to digital converters. Again, the details of how the ADC work are beyond the scope of this video, but if you're interested, you can check out this link here. And integrators can be used in certain types of sensors where you want to keep a running total of something, such as a water flow over time. And the final example that I want to give you, which is one that we're going to look at in a bit more detail, is that they can be used for shaping periodic signals. For example, when a square wave like this VN voltage here is integrated, you get a triangle wave, as you can see in the output. Now, let's go through this example in a bit more detail to try to understand how this integrator is working. So in this example, my VN is a 50% duty cycle square wave with a frequency of 1000 Hertz. I'm going to set R1 to be one kilo ohm, and this feedback capacitor is 500 nanofarads. And so for this time from zero to 0.5 milliseconds, VN is at one volt. So V out can be determined from this equation here. So one over a thousand times 500 nanofarads, I'll leave it to you to confirm, but that's going to be equal to 2000 times the integral from zero to 0 0.0005, that's 0.5 milliseconds, of one with respect to time. This is equal to negative 2000 T 
from 0 to 0 0.0005. So at t equals 0, v out will also be 0. And at t equals 0 0.0005, v out will be negative 2,000 times 0 0.0005, which is negative 1. So basically, from time 0 to 0 0.005, v out will change by minus 1 volt in a linear manner. And we don't have to make the assumption that v out starts at 0. If we assume that v out starts at 0 0.5 volts, it's going to decrease by 1 volt over this 0.5 milliseconds. So it's going to go from 0.5 all the way down to negative 0.5 milliseconds in a nice straight line, just like I've drawn there. Then in that next block of time where, where t goes from 0 0.5 milliseconds up to 1 millisecond, we can use the same equation, except that v in is at minus 1. So v out will be negative 2,000 times the integral. I'm going to go from 0 to t just so that we can look only at the at how v out is changing, not what the actual values are, but just the relative changes for v out. So I'm just going to say it's going from 0 to t, and v in is at minus 1, and we're doing this integration over time. So again, this is going to be minus 2,000 times minus 1 from 0 up to 0 0.0005 again. It's another 0.5 millisecond time block. So this time at t equals 0, v out, the offset of v out will be 0. And at t equals 0 0.0005, v out is going to change by 1 volt. So it's going to increase by 1 volt in a linear manner over this next 0.5 millisecond time block. So it's going to go from negative 0.5 up to positive 0.5, a change of 1 volt again. And now I'm back to where I started over here. So what I will end up with is this triangle wave that I have drawn very poorly here, but we can see it better here. Okay, so I've jumped over to LT Spice so that we can look at this circuit in simulation. And I have built the integrator circuit here. And there's a few things that I should note. First of all, this is a universal op amp, so it's an ideal op amp from the LT Spice library. Second, I'm using the pulse configuration for this independent voltage source, and I've set it up to have an initial voltage of minus one, an on voltage of one volt. So it's going, to, but that basically means it's going to go from minus one to one volt. There's no time delay, so it immediately starts its operation. The rise time I've got is set to one nanosecond. I basically want that rise time to be something really, really small. If I set it to zero, it's actually not going to have a zero rise time, so I don't want it set to zero. I want it just something very, very small that's not zero. The fall time, the same thing, very, very small value. It will be on for 0.5 milliseconds, and its period is one millisecond. So it is basically going to be oscillating back and forth between one volt and minus one volt with a period of one millisecond, which is a frequency of one kilohertz. I also had to set up the initial voltage across this capacitor to, to be minus 0.5 volts. And what this does is allows the system to start in a steady state. You'll get some really weird results if you don't set the initial condition of the V out voltage. And I'm going to do a transient analysis 4.004 seconds. So this is basically going to be for four cycles of my input signal. My resistor is set to 1000 ohms, like I was using in the example, and 500 nanofarads for the capacitor. Now let's simulate the circuit and look at the input voltage, which is the square wave that I set up with this pulse generator, and look at the output voltage. And you can see it's that triangle wave, exactly like I showed you when I solved the circuit by hand. One thing to note about integrator circuits is that they are very sensitive to things not being ideal. So for example, if there is a small offset in this pulse train, and I'll show that by adding another voltage source and setting this to be a DC voltage source of just 0 0.01 volts, so just a 10 millivolt offset. And I'm going to run this for a little bit longer so that you can see the effect over time. Let's go with 100 milliseconds. And I run it and you can see there's this drift downwards because the VIN has a little bit of offset, that 0 0.01 volt offset when we're doing the integration that small error is going to accumulate over time. Now here's another small change that I can make. If that on time is 0.49 milliseconds instead of 0.5 milliseconds, so it's not quite a 50% duty cycle signal anymore, again, I get this drift 
because the integration time is a little bit shorter for the time when Vn is high compared to when Vn is low. So integrators are very sensitive to changes because any small change is going to accumulate over time. So an integrator can work really on any signal. Here I've got a square wave input, but what if I have this triangle wave input into an integrator? So I can do that by chaining these in chaining integrators together. So I can take the output of the first integrator, which is this triangle wave, and put it into the input of a second integrator. And I've done exactly that right here. And it's the exact same circuit. I have a thousand ohm resistor and a 500 nanofarad capacitor. I've got the initial condition of this second output also at negative 0.5 volts. And you can see there's that same pulse train. So now when I simulate, you can see there's my input. You can see that there's the output of the first stage, the triangle wave like we had before. And now when I put a triangle wave through an integrator, well, think about what's happening. I have the triangle wave applied at the input and a triangle wave, uh, let's say on the rising, on the rising edge of the triangle wave, the slope of that is one volt over 0 0.0005 seconds. So that's a slope of 2000. And so when I'm integrating that input, Again, it's negative one over 2000 because of my R and my C value. And then the integral from zero to 0 0.0005, 2000 T, because it's a line with a slope of 2000 DT. Here you'll get negative 2000 over 2000, which is of course just negative one, times the integral from zero to 0 0.0005 T DT, which is negative T squared over two from zero to 0 0.0005. So what you get is a quadratic function. I mean, it's a, it's a negative quadratic function, but it's a quadratic function. So over this time period, over this time period, as V out is increasing, or in this case, this is V in, you'll get something that looks like that. It's not exactly the scale over here, but that's the shape that it's going to be. And then on the negative slope, you're gonna do the exact same calculation, except that this will be a positive number. So you'll get something that looks like that. And so it's almost a sine wave that you're going to end up with, but it's just two quadratic functions, one positive one and one negative one back to back. So the moment you've all been waiting for, what does that V out to look like? Well, there it is. Kind of looks like a sine wave, but we know it's not actually sinusoidal. It's just quadratic function, quadratic function, quadratic function, quadratic function. And they are the exact same, one's positive and one's negative. So that was a lot. But the bottom line is in this video, we've seen that an op amp circuit can actually do calculus. And in this case, integration. And hopefully this does give you a better understanding of op amp integrator circuits. And if you want to learn more, be sure to subscribe and sign up for notifications. Also, check out my website, which has all sorts of content related to electrical and electronic circuits, and you can find a link to that in the description. Two op amps meet in the street. The first one says, do I know you? And the second one says, well, your phase is familiar, but I don't remember your gain. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. As always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.